Howdy YouTube and welcome to another episode of The Gunman. So today I've decided to do an ultimate guide to doing Soul Red Crystal resprays. So what we've got here is a Mazda CX-3, right? So I'm just gonna go through the entire procedure on how we get the best results. And a big part of what we do is um, the way that you mix the paint up. So trust me, I've done a fair few of these. At the very start, I was following the way that PPG recommended. If you are using a different paint system, um, a lot of this stuff will not be uh, relevant to you, but I guess all the prep work and the application, you might be able to get a few tips and tricks out of it. But um, a big part of it is the way that you mix the colors. So the colors and the clears and the primers and all those little different things make a massive difference to um, getting a good job or an average job. Um, another thing that should be uh, noted is get your masking nice and neat and clean. We've obviously already given it a good prep sole down. We've done all the prep work, fixed any repairs, done any stone chips. So just make sure you've got a good base to start with. Another little thing that um, some people that are starting off, they'll, they'll sort of do their masking too close to that edge. You want to just peel it just up off that edge a little bit on your doors and stuff like that. Just so it's up on that... Um, on the seam sealer edge rather than being right on the paint edge because yeah the last thing you want is to be um when you run your hand over those edges you don't want big thick edges um of course i have given it a really good um prep sole as well a really good tack rag and it's all ready to get some wet on wet primer down first thing mix your primer up they recommend to use a g5 primer do not use g5 primer and don't underestimate how important all of these little steps are because they are, okay? So if you use G5 primer, you're gonna have primer all through the edges that is the wrong color, that you're gonna have to put two, minimum two coats over to get your coverage, right? If you mix it up the way that I do, the, the wet on wet primer, it's only gonna take one coat. So that's, that's very important, right? So with the G6 primer, they mix 205 and 207 in basically 50-50 um, mixtures there, right? What you want to do is halve the 205, right? So they put in 205 and 207. That's the primers, then you go down to your hardener and your thinners, right? So we want to slightly adjust. So I call it a 6.5. Seven is probably gonna to be too dark for the base coat color to cover, just a touch too dark. So what I do, so that one there is the 205, I halve that and replace it with the 207, okay? So that's important. So I still put 265 in, right? But half of it and then half of it is the 207 and that is the 207 and I put all of that in. So you're just making that um, G6 primer a uh, another shade darker, right? Um, then you put the standard amount of 320 in, standard amount of 450 in. I've been using 420. Uh, this time of year, it's still not very hot, but if it's um, warm months, yes, you still wanna use your 410. But then I add an extra dose of the 420 um, or 410. If it was, uh, you know, like above 30 degrees, I'd be using 410, but add an extra amount of that. So that thins it down. Again, it is important. All these things do play um, a role in getting this good finish. So basically you're just diluting it, you're making a bit thin, you're getting a thinner film build on the panel. That does help with your film builds at the end of the job. It's also gonna help with any edges. The last thing that you want, because they're in, we're not painting the door jams, you wanna make a nice seamless um, transition from exterior to interior of the panel. So yes, add an extra dose of some of the thinners, but so, cause you can see that it's got two thinners, right? You add an extra dose of one of the thinners. So not the 450, that'll probably make it dry too fast on you. So keep the 450 in, cause that is an accelerated thinner, but add an extra dose of whatever the other thinner that you're using is. And again, that will change depending on the um, temperature of the day. Now, that's our wet on wet primer. So now we're gonna go in, spray a coat of wet on wet primer down. So another thing that I like to do is just pick a point on the car, I guess within reason, it kinda doesn't really matter. Pick a point and that's gonna be your start point for every coat, okay? Another thing that I like to do with this primer is keep it away from the edges. There's no need to go to the edges. It's already, it's already got paint on there. Um, it's already colored, so there's no need to, with your wet on wet primer, there's no need to spray in those edges. In fact, you're trying to stay away from them. 
So what I'll be trying to do, so what I do on these quarter panels, because this is particularly, that's the one of the ones that you do see, you know, it's right at eye level. This one, not so much, but we still want to get nice edges on all of it. Um, but yeah, so what I'll actually do is I'll stand back here, right? So that sort of forces you not to um, aim at that edge. So just hold it, that, aim the gun sort of on that little diagonal, and that's going to force you to keep that away from that edge. So I'm using my Segola 4600 Extreme 1.3 XL with a Titania air cap on it, two bar pressure, off you go, easy. Radio. So that's that wet on wet down. As you can see, it's drying rather fast. Now, when I put that wet on wet down, I keep the temperature in the spray booth to 20 degrees Celsius. And then as soon as I put it down, I'll be walking straight out and cranking that booth up to 30, get a bit of heat in there. By the time I've cleaned my gun out and put the color into the gun, that will be ready to go. So that's the beauty of the 450 thinner. It is an accelerated thinner um, and having that extra bit of heat in there. Um, and that thin coat does help too. So yeah, not overloading the material by adding that extra reducer does in fact help the dry times. Rightio, so next up we're gonna mix the color. I actually have some mixed up in a pot. I mix up big batches. So 46V is the paint code. Um, I'll just show you how I find the variant, right? So on my screen, I know that that's the one, right? So yeah, 46V. 2017 onwards, um, I click on that and I just have been going the agreed variant here, right? So LDX16, take note of that if you would like. Um, but yeah, I've just found that to be the best variant, right? So I go on, click on that one here um, and go okay there and I'll go reduction. This is another important one here. So then you go here and I have been um, going 25, so I'll go 0.25%. Um, and that is the best thinning ratio. It's a good balance between coverage and it's going to dry properly. So with this EnviroBase, if you mix it up what they recommend here in Australia, which is 15%, it will look dry, but then it will be like this thick film that doesn't actually dry. And over the weeks, it will just pull back it, it like a three stage with any other normal um, paint system. If you know how the three stages, they, they sort of lose gloss, you get that gloss drop. But that's what happens with this, even if it's not a three stage, right? Um, it I've found anyway, and I've seen it happen to everybody else too. <laughs> so yeah, as soon as you start thinning this stuff down properly, it's a whole new world, but you do have to make sure you get those ground coats uh, right. Um, and that's for other colors as well. So they do generally get their ground coat colors wrong. So just, you've got to trust your gut sometimes. If you're doing a blue and they give you a G5 and it's a dark blue, just go for a G6 or G7. So um, yeah, that's what I do. I don't alter that formula at all. I just do put the 25% reducer in. You can see inside here, now this is color that has been pre-filtered before going into there. It's then sat open, you know, for a day or two, not, not very long, and there's more grit that, that come through that EnviroBase. So it's, it's, very, it's prone to that, it's known for that. So that's been double filtered, and then we've got another filter through here. But what can happen is that you can actually push those bits of stuff through when you use the PPS2, because they're a bag system. Um, apart from that, I like to use this gun here for my base coat. So a DV1 base coat gun. Uh, air cap is the B plus cap, uh, yeah, 1.3, yeah, beautiful gun. But I did have to get an adapter. Cheers, and a shout out to Spray Guns Direct, well, for the gun and also that adapter. So if you're looking for them, um, be sure to hit up Spray Guns Direct. Um, can't seem to see the number there, but no doubt they would be able to help you if you wanted one. Um, previously, I was using the SATA. They recommend SATA at PPG, but um, I do prefer the Deville the versus the base gun. So, as you can see, that primer is nice and dry and it's probably only been five minutes, like I say, 30 degrees temperature. 
on the spray boost there. Um, so yeah, settings that I use on this gun, full fan, full fluid, 20 PSI. And I do that for every coat. I do change the way that I spray from first and second to third coat, but I've just found it's just easier just to leave the settings at that one, that one setting. So 20 PSI, bang on 20 PSI, not above, not below, um, at the base of the gun. So yeah, um, let's go. First coat of base coat, I only do the faces. Second coat, I'll do faces and edges. Third coat, only faces. So it's worth noting that we do paint the doors off the car. There's a good reason for it. What they found when they were painting the doors on the car is that they were getting some sort of window framing around the edges on the candy, which is just an excessive buildup of the clear coat. So I don't personally think that would happen to me. I don't really get window framing very often, especially on the candy stage. Um, but I still think if, if for only one reason, these edges here, it's a lot easier to control the amount you get on these edges like i was saying you don't want thick edges um, when the doors are off the car also overspray it's easier to mask less chance of overspray um, but yes we do need to paint those doors at exactly the same time and make sure you're very uh, diligent with getting those gun pressure settings and speeds all identical so that you're not going to have any color difference when you put them back on the car but of course, uh, you know, we can't fit all of the parts in the spray booth at the same time. Um, a lot of people do opt to do candy resprays with the entire car bolted up together, but we've got enough experience that, um, yeah, we're confident to do it this way. Um, but another thing worth noting is if you get any nibs like this, so yeah, you've got to sand them out in your base coat stage. So yeah, that's a pretty big one. Depending on the size, little ones like that, if it was only that tiny little one, I'm not sure if you can see that, I'd nearly leave it, depending on the size, but that's, that one's so big that it's gonna have to come out. The reason why I'd potentially leave it is cause sanding them out, you can so sometimes sand one out and add an extra 50. So you do have to be very careful tack ragging and air blowing to get any of the uh, dust that you have made from doing your denibbing. And I just use 1200 grit, um, 2000 grit, maybe a little bit too fine. Uh, anything coarser than 1200 and yeah, it could get a little bit scratchy for when you go to put your color back over the top of it But yeah, that that there is I can see that that's actually in the um in the primer stage So yeah, if you can catch them in the primer stage awesome But it can be harder to see them sometimes in the primer when it's all that primer gray um, But that's all that needs just a just a light scuff over the top um, then I'll get the high pressure air blower and a tack rag, just to, as I say, make sure I've removed as much of that potential dust. <clears throat> so the rest of it did look pretty good. Um, but yeah, it's worth just inspecting every time you're putting a coat on, just sort of watch what you're doing. Now, when I do sand them down, I've found um, you're best off just putting a nice wet coat of color over it. That's just what I've found works better. If you just try dusting it on it, you've got to put like so many coats on, but yeah, to fill up those 1200 grit scratches, I've found you're just best off doing something like that. Just put a medium to wet coat on it and then just continue on painting like the rest of the job. Um, but yeah, take note also that that's pretty much covered after that first coat. Like, yes, there's a little bit of primer that you can see, but um, you can kind of tell that that prime is the right color. So what I'm going to go for is full coverage after my second coat. And like I said before, second coat, edges and faces.
All right, so that's our second coat down. And as I said, we did faces and edges on this coat. And because I got that color right, the color of that ground coat, I should say, because I got that primer color right, it only takes a really quick coat, right? So I didn't even overload it. It's just a really quick coat on the edges and it's covered straight away. Um, and the outer panels are covered now properly. And the next coat's basically gonna be an effect coat and also a, just to make sure that it's covered. So my rule of thumb has always been, get it covered and put an extra coat on. And yeah, so after the second coat, it is covered. I'll go out for another quick top up on that color. Um, that should be flushed off by then because we don't overload it and we've got enough reducer in there that it's gonna dry nice and fast. So there's lots of factors to getting a clean job. There's not one silver bullet, right? So keeping yourself clean, keeping the panels clean, blowing them off properly before getting it in, keeping the spray booths clean, using these rags in here. So we were actually using the cotton rags at the start and then I started shaking them like, man, there's dust everywhere. And I was just seeing little bits of lint everywhere. And I reckon that was actually coming off those um, cotton rags. So all those little things. So what I do now, always use, um, microfiber cloths only even here in the paint room so it might get a little bit expensive but the job pays for it at the end of the day so what we'll do we'll do a rotation we use a new microfiber most jobs um, in the booth to prep solve it with right and then that will um, get rotated to a bench slash bench cleaning and stick cleaning rag and then it'll get turfed out and we just rotate them so um, yeah that's another really important thing make sure you filter your paint properly nice clean gloves uh, keep the airline clean that's another thing that uh, some people do overlook anyway time for our last coat so i do spray this one a little bit faster um, and hold that gun back a little bit really was much But it is worth getting, definitely have to get rid of the big ones because when you put the candy down, it actually magnifies them. So it turns, because the candy's got like a dye in there, it, um, it's like it gets, it creates a shadow if you do have any nibs there. So you will see it. So on to the next step, which is mixing up our tinted clear coats. So what you're gonna have to do is get some VM4350. To the best of my knowledge, that's in all of them. That's the candy that they use. So it's PPG, Vibrance Collection range. Now, what they recommend, again, this is another thing that I have um, adjusted myself just to get better results. Um, from memory, they recommended three coats. So it doesn't actually say it here, but either way, I do not recommend three coats. I recommend two coats, and I also don't recommend the amount that they put in. So they put in 49 grams per liter, right, of clear coat. I put in 40 grams. So I've, I've lowered the amount, but I've also, so the clear coat, it doesn't specifically say which clear coat that you have to use. So you can change it to different clear coats, but I tell you now, whatever clear and this is perhaps the most important part of this video it's something that i did not know and so it took me a while before i actually figured out what was going on and that this is this was the cause of most of the orange peel that you will get i'm doing the world a favor by telling you this right um it's such a good secret that i was nearly tempted to just keep it for myself but i'm not that kind of person i want to share my knowledge with the world and help make the world a better place and a shinier place and a less orange peely place so the clear coat that i use is the dc527 right so that's a sprint clear there's a good reason i use that because it's fast right because you because you, you're going to put a couple of coats of this down we do need to lock it down with another clear later so you don't want to have to wait longer than is necessary right so i use the dc527 DH70, uh, sorry, 720, which is the medium hardener. And then I'll use LVT430. You can use the, D, um, the DT thinner if you want, but at the end of the day, they're basically all the same. Just a fast thinner, right? Now, what I was about to get to before, so we'll go to find that clear coat in our ready for use preferences. I know where it is, DC527. Now, what you wanna do here is go full. So press the plus, that will that will give you the full amount, like the most amount of thinners that they, uh, they recommend, and then go okay on that. And then when you get to here, this is the important part. So let's just say I'm gonna mix up 1700. I'm gonna mix up 1.7 liters, right? 
Now, double the thinners. That is the important part. And I just sort of ripped that out of, I just ripped that out of thin air. I just thought, hey, let's try it. And it works, and it worked perfectly. So as you can see there, we've got 527, 720, and 850. You can change the thinners, it doesn't change the weight, right? Um, so yeah, double that thinners. And then add, like I said, 40 grams per liter. So you know, you can sort of figure that out, 1.7. Um, you'll figure that out with some uh, basic formula in your own head. But yeah, that is the most important part. Add double thinners to the candy stage. I don't know what it is about these candies, but it doesn't matter what clear you put it in. Well, in saying that, 105. If you put this clear in 105, it doesn't make it stand up. Um, but any other clear, it will make it go really orange peeling. But in saying that, 105 is not a good clear for this. It's just not a very good clear for it. It's prone to run, um, you're making mess out of it. So, Rightio, so that's a quick look over it once the base coat is dry and we're ready to put that candy down. I know it's a bit of a strange color. You wouldn't necessarily expect that would be the, the base coat color for a candy, but it is. And it's pretty consistent across most paint systems I've found. Obviously gonna get a, a fine variation, but yeah, there we go. Looks nice and clean. I'm pretty, pretty confident that this is gonna come up good. So yeah, what we do with the candy is first coat faces, just like we did on the base coat color. So no edges on your first coat, second coat faces and edges. And the gun that I'm using is my Gunman Edition Pro Light TE20 1.3. So I've found this just to be the best for candy. Uh, it's got a high fluid uh, delivery, so it'll smash the clear on. Um, full fluid, full fan, and a bit above two bar pressure. I mainly crank that pressure up just to sort of speed it up a little bit. Full fan, full fluid. And 33 PSI. And this will just go down so nice because we've put that extra thinners in it. No orange peel. But you do have to get it on nice and wet. But because it's, because it's a sprint clear and we put fast reducer in it, you shouldn't need, um, you shouldn't worry about runs or big heavy edges too much, of course. Oh, I guess you've always got to worry to a certain extent, but. guys so the next thing I want to talk about is bake times and flash off times specifically between the candy and the lockdown clear uh, stage so you can't just leave it what we just did there we put our candy down yes it is in clear but um, you're not going to be able to polish that because as soon as you start polishing you're going to be sanding that uh, sanding and buffing that uh, candy or the dye layer out so we do need to lock that down with a normal clear a couple of coats of normal clear as to have something that we can um, polish and it's also going to be a bit of a protective layer right so we have to do that now it doesn't really matter which clear you use it, it does turn out that you can use most of them um, uh, here in Australia you're either going to be using 136 or 105 clear I would imagine anyway I can't see why you want to use any other clear coats but personally I do prefer the 105 clear it goes really hard um, 25 minute bake you can just about tungsten it let it cool down after a 25 minute bake and you can pretty much uh, raise the blade or tungsten it that's how hard it goes and that's how fast it goes hard but um, yeah uh, if you do decide to use the 136 clear um, 
Yeah, just add a, add a little bit of thinners to it, but I, it's not my personal favorite. Although I can get some good re results with it, but it just takes a really long time to dry. You're probably best off giving it a one hour bake. But on the topic of bakes, between um, candy and whatever clear you do decide to use, it's very important to get those bake windows right. So if you go if it's uh, not long enough, you're going to, so if you get, say, give it a five minute bake, um, potential for solvent boil, you're gonna trap those solvents in there from the candy layer. If you go too long, it's gonna be too dry and you're not gonna get adhesion. It'd just be like not sanding a, ca a, a car down when it's fully cured and putting your clear coat over it, it's not gonna stick, is it? So you, you gotta be very particular and you've gotta know your flash times and don't just believe, don't just blindly believe what I say, don't blindly believe what any rep says, don't blindly believe what any uh, paint can says as well because there's many factors that are going to contribute to that window being correct, right? So the clear coat that you've used. If you used, um, so I used the Sprint Clear, which is a fast clear, right? If you've gone and used a normal clear that's not, and, and with a standard hardener and a standard reducer in it, well then the window is gonna be a bit, uh, well, you're gonna have to bake it for longer. So I, if I don't need to denib it, right? So that's another thing. You can denib. If you get some nibs in that candy stage, you can lightly 1200 them and then clear over the top. But that's another thing. But if I'm going to do that, I'll give it a 15 minute bake. Any longer and I would risk um, delamination, potentially down the track. Um, any shorter and it wouldn't be um, enough to sand it, right? So there is like a sweet spot. But again, if you use uh, medium thinner, I don't know exactly where it would be, but there would be a sweet spot. You would have to find that. And if you've got a different spray booth that doesn't get straight up to temperature, we got brand new low bake booths here. They're really good. Um, but yeah, if you're using a different spray booth that takes, like I've worked at one of the places I've worked in at Perth, it took 10 minutes for the booth to heat up. So, you know, that, that bake time would potentially be 20 or 25 minutes. So I'm just, I really want to make that clear that what works for me may not work for you because there are definitely some variables. Now we've got that out of the way, get your bake times right, You got and you've got to find that, I had to find that. Like pretty much everything with this procedure, it's been refined through me. No, there's no one there telling you what to do. You know, this is the real world and you've got to adapt to what you're working with. So, yes, um, next thing is the clear coat. I do love this 105 clear here. Yeah, there's pros and cons to it. You have to be very, careful the way you spray it. I've found the first coat, you gotta put it on ultra skinny. Like you don't wanna go too wet with that first coat. Crank the pressure up around 40 PSI, get it cranking really high pressure. And generally with clear coats, you want your first coat to be closed, right? With this one, I'd, I'd not stress if it's not fully closed. You'll pick it up with your second coat, right? Um, like still try to aim for a nice closed coat, most of it, but if there's one or two spots where you can see through to the candy stage, don't just go over overloading it because you're gonna get have too much material on there. Um, another thing, I like to use the 530 thinners. At one point, we only had the 520, right? So that's the LVT 530. Um, silly PP, it doesn't even tell you medium fast. It just says low, high, or medium temp, so whatever. Like I think that's just medium, 530. We were using the 520 at the start, and I was getting solvent boiled even down the sides of panels. So yeah, I, I don't know what's going on with that. But yeah, I recommend the 530 thinners, ultra skinny. Don't You don't need to mess, mess with that thinning ratio or anything, just mix it up the way they recommend. So there we are, ready to go. 105 clear mixed up in the A&I Black Skull Edition. Beautiful looking gun. Digital gauge on it, I do like that digital gauge. 105, uh, 1.5 litres I've found is enough to do most of them. Three sprays, a, a, a bigger car may use a little bit more. But yeah, another random thing I just wanted to say, these gloves, these are killer. So these are the Colad Nitrile Grey Gloves Large. They're a little bit thicker than your average gloves. So if you're doing things like Paint Stripper, um, I found they're a bit uh, better. And as you can see, they're, they come a little bit longer up the arm. So again, if you are on Spray Guns Direct, buying one of their awesome spray guns, be sure to get yourself a box of these gloves. They're really good. Colad, they make good quality stuff too. And I really like these things, these little touch-up tips, another little random thing. And also these um, magnetic, uh, I think they call them magnetic foil cutters because they do have a little magnet on the back so you can sort of stick it up there if you want. 
Um, art number is 2070. While you're there, get yourself a few of these. They're only, say, a dollar each, so cheap, and it makes masking it very easy. I've always got one in my pocket. They're really handy for just tucking a little bit of masking up underneath as well, so they come in handy for more than just cutting the plastic. It's a really handy thing to have in your pocket as a spray painter. Right here guys, so because I was really happy with the cleanliness of this job, I just gave it that 10 minutes that I was talking about. Now look, it's not to say that there's no nibs in it, there's one big one there, but I have found if it's just say one big one per panel, just leave it. Once you're starting to get two, three, four, nib them out, but it does take an extra bit of time to wipe them down with microfibers, blow them off, give them an extra tack rag. So sometimes if it's just one, um, you'll be better off just leaving it because you can end up um, making it worse if, if you're not careful. So yeah, apart from that, I'm really happy with how this job is looking. Just keep an eye on these. You can redo them after this stage if you have to. Um, but yeah, just I'm, I'm just careful that I don't put too much clear on those edges and it should be totally fine. Um, but yeah, looking good guys. Ready for clear coat? Let's get into it. Guys, so like I say, first coat faces only, second coat faces and edges, no flash off time, skinny on the first coat, fat on the second. So yeah, full fluid, um, full fan, and full full pressure, which is 2.6 bar. So that may change depending on what you've got it set at the wall at. I like to get that gun nice and close on the first coat. I just got to paint like normal on the second coat. But like I say, you can see, there's some, some little, well that's actually not so bad, but there's a couple of little spots here where you can just see through to the candy stage, right? Don't worry about it, you'll pick it up on your second coat. If it was 136, you would want a fully closed coat, but not with the 105, it's okay. clear leave a bit of room for flow so don't put it on as heavy as what you may with um, normal clear it will flow I've finished painting I'll carefully peel these edges off right you can get a little bit of bridging from that clear coat and then just run your finger with a nice clean glove over that edge and it would just melt it in and sometimes you won't ever need a buffer really handy little tip this one again all stuff I've come up with myself over the years And that's it. 
So there we go guys, that's about it. Um, two coats of clear, that only took me 12 minutes to put those two coats of 105 clear down, so nice and fast. And that's actually going to continue to flow as I bake it. Um, so yeah, really good clear, I do like it. It's a little bit of a prick to polish, especially on the black. So on the black, I've actually found myself using the 136 clear because it is um, a little bit easier for the boys in the polishing bay. But um, like I say, very nice, clean job. Nice flat orange feel to it. Um, that A&I skull is a killer gun. Massive down on it, nice and fast, um, and more than capable. But like I say, that is actually a 1.2, so don't be um, don't be fooled by what it says on the air cap, because you can change the fluid tips and you don't have to change the air cap, but have a look at that, so clean. Um, it was a far cry from what I was getting, so it's been a long road to get here. I've just about had to change everything from what I started. I recommend go back and watch some of my videos from about two years ago when I was first spraying this. Full of orange peel, full of dust. Um, not something I can say that I'm very proud of, but at the end of the day, you know, look at where we are now. We're doing some of the best um, re-sprays here in Australia and that's well known too. Um, so yeah, really good, really good. Have a look at that guys. Ultimate guide to spraying Soul Red Crystal. This is all you need guys, this is all you need. Follow what I do and you'll get the same result. So that's it after a quick 25 minute bake. Nice and rock hard. You can barely even put your thumbnail into it. Um, nice and clean job. I'm really happy with this one. Um, it's actually one of the better ones I've done. So hey, I picked a good one to um, showcase what I can do and what you can probably do too if you spend the time. Yeah, I have faith that you can get these kind of results too as long as you follow this procedure. And like I say, the most important thing is getting that candy thinned down correctly. I was at one point mucking around with spray guns, settings, air pressures, distances and all that, but I was looking in the wrong direction because it was all in that candy stage. But yeah, some of the other things they all do play into a nice clean job and that is, there's no edge there at all. That's killer. That doesn't even need to be polished. That's awesome. Really good. Really, really good. And it's little bits of attention to detail like those edges, which are the difference between a good job and an average job. Um, and this, it'll only take him a couple of hours to polish. So what we do now, we just unmask sort of what we need to to jump in the car. I sort of cut it off across here. Um, and just cut a little access hole in here, but I'll leave most of the masking on. So we actually buff them um, before we put them back together. We found that is the best way. That way, there's a second set of eyes running over the job. You know, there might be something that I may have missed in the booth. We've got an awesome um, light tunnel there for the detailer, so he may me he may find something and I, that that needs to say potentially be resprayed. I'd rather that be picked up before it goes back together then it's easy just quickly squirt that one panel in um, rather than having to get the entire car stripped back out again so that's about it guys hopefully you guys did enjoy watching this video i'll give you guys a look at it once it is all back together but that gloss it stays like that so yeah i've done these for long enough that um yeah a very high confidence that we're not going to get any gloss drops so these are actually some of the best resprays that i've ever done um, and partly because of that, because you're putting those extra coats of clear, those two coats of clear, that could be the coat that sort of dies back with the water blind. And because there's four coats of clear on there, um, you actually get a better gloss retention as long as you do bake uh, properly in between coats. So. so yeah, once I've got the body all done and that's out there, the boys can be denivigant, um, in comes the panels. So we've got bonnet, tailgate and bumpers. Now we do have a few other small parts like I used to like cram everything in the booth and I just decided look it's just far easier to do three bake cycles rather than two. You just cram it in you end up getting over spray all over the walls and it's just so much easier and yeah I just found three bake cycles is easier than two. But as you can see there nice killer glassy clean finishes I've been getting. 
um, yeah, really happy. It's um, it, it sort of it was hard for me when I was doing these at the start. It really, I took a bit of a hit to my ego because I thought I was better than that, and and I was, but it, it just it was that candy. So this is how we go in this shop. It comes out of the booth there. As soon as it comes out of the booth, we'll put it into the bay, the polishing bay here. As you can see there, we've got a killer light tunnel. Um, and yeah, they'll get them denibbed uh, while they're still off the car, as I mentioned earlier. Make sure we get all those edges nice and neat in case there's any rough edges on them. Um, and like I said, it's good to have a second pair of eyes run over the job, just in case there is something that I've missed. Um, and from there, once they're polished, we'll go into the assembly section which is across here they've got nice uh, neatly labeled bays with all the parts and that um, parts are going to get put back on but yeah we're giving him clean work uh, of course and as you can see here the boys have just got to put a few more parts on um, after that we'll get the windows and the glasses put back in the quarter quarter glasses front and rear windows as well and yeah bumper's going to go back on and then it will go back into the light tunnel into the detailing bay just um, so that he can sort of run his eyes back over it one more time just to make sure he hasn't missed anything um, But yeah, the the uh, assemblers are pretty good. So um, With fresh clear coat even though we've given it a good bake and everything um, If you get like a stain on the panel or a bit of dust here The worst thing you can do is start wiping it off because you will scratch it everything you do will scratch it. So um, they're good. They, they know what to do and, and these boys are really good. The, the guys that do the assembling, like they'll raise the alarm if they see like a little chip or they might even accidentally make a little chip when they're putting the doors back on. They'll always tell me um, so that we can get it fixed. So it's, it's a real good sort of team environment and we sort of we're all on the same page just to get these jobs um, out and looking good. So yeah, that's about it guys. Um, I'll take it outside in the sun when it's all back together too. Thanks for watching right up to the end guys. But yeah, what an epic video, what an epic respray, and what an epic journey life is. These things nearly broke my spirit. They had me second guessing my own skills in the trade, but I tell you what, I come through with the goods and aren't they looking awesome. Again, hope you guys got something out of it. If you did, at the very least, give us a big thumbs up. If you wanna support the show, be sure to go and check out the link in the description where you can go and buy yourself some Gummer merchandise. Otherwise, just go and buy some stuff from Spray Guns Direct. If you need a spray gun, I do highly recommend getting your gear from Spray Guns direct they do ship worldwide and they have a very good quality service they're great people also uh shout out to chris from spray guns direct thanks for all the gear that you've sponsored over the years it's really appreciated until next time get out there and paint some shit coming out